Um, so first and foremost, just to welcome those of you who are watching with us with the, uh, for the first time. Um, I can see some lovely faces. Can you just give them a round of applause? Welcome, 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 welcome. Give them a handshake. Just shake their hands. and Awesome. Welcome them once again. <laughs> welcome to Faith Life Harrogate. We are one church in multiple locations. We are in Manchester. We're in Preston. And we're in Harrogate. And also want to use this opportunity to welcome those of you who are watching with us um, online. Um, it's just so great for you to, um, to tune in to us today, watching on any of our social media platforms. Um, it's just an honor for you to do that. And we just hope that one of these days you'll be able to visit us in one of our locations, whether in Manchester, or Preston, or, Harrog um, or here in Harrogate. And we'll be so glad you did. Thank you so much. And what you can also do, um, if you can just uh, let us know in the chat where you're watching, with, uh, where you're um, tuning in from, and we'll be so glad you did. Also, um, we've got a special guest for those in the house. Amen. Um, so um, the ushers will give you um, a, a pack. So if you can just take that, and inside the pack is actually a green card. Okay. Um, and if you'd like to complete that with your name and your email address, uh, and then pop that back to the um, steward, and they would love to keep in contact with you. Um, so there's some um, lovely goodies in there. So yes, okay, I can. Yeah, I've just got a signal. Thank you. <laughs> so that's awesome. So please do complete that, and um, yes, and then hand that back to um, Ola, please, and we'll be in contact with you. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to be bringing the word this morning. It's going to be continuing from uh, what we had last week. Yeah. Thank you. Last Sunday. Um, this uh, this year, as you can see, the um, the word for this year is lift up 20, uh, 24-7. So uh, be lifted up 24-7 from um, Psalm 20, uh, 24, verse 7. Okay, so um, we've been tracking with that word. And this morning, um, I just felt, I mean, from um, picking up from what we did last week, we talked about, you know, how we lift up one another is in threefold, lifting up one another, lifting up leaders, and also lifting up our eyes for the harvest. But before I go into the word, can we bow down our heads for prayer? Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you so much for the entrance of your word that brings life and understanding to the simple. So, Father, we just want to thank you for this word that as we go into your word, we pray that Holy Spirit, you will minister to us. Father, the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened by the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, Lord, we pray that all hearts will be alert, will be attentive to your word, and that your word, oh God, will bring, Father, Lord, will bear fruit in our hearts, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. So we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone in the house said a big amen. Can I just have my mobile? Thank you so much. Okay. How many of you are now ready for the word? Awesome. Okay. Now, if you have your Bibles with you, I know we, we did this. I just want us to just hold up your Bible. If you have it on your phone or if you have it, um, pay, yeah, a copy of your Bible, just raise that up. And let's do this, uh, make this declaration together. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am who it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. Today, I'll be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. And I will never be the same. Today, I'll be taught the word of God. My heart is alert. My mind is receptive. And I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. High five the person next to you and said, welcome to church. Amen. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So today, um, I'm going to be doing, you know, um, the topic for today is actually lift up the leaders. But I'm going to start back. I'm going to do an exercise this morning. So if you have, so we've got some pieces of paper here. Um, if you just want to take, a, if, how many of you have got your notepads with you? If you've got a notepad with you, okay. Can I get um, the ushers to just pass this out? I'd like everyone to have a sheet. Please just... Um, if you can... Actually, what you can do, if you can give everybody one... Just... Yeah, one sheet. 
those who, if you have, how many of you have your notepad? Because note takers are history makers. How many note takers do we have in the house? Okay, right, okay. So if you have your own notepad, that's fine. If you haven't got on one, please take a piece of paper. But I encourage you to take notes today because it's going to be really interesting. Amen. And I can see that the, obviously the kids are in with us this morning, so which is great. Um, and if you want some extras to take notes, please um, let the steward know. Okay. Everyone to have a piece of paper. And what I'd like you to do on that piece of paper, okay, I'd like you to, do, we're going to do what we call the heart mapping exercise, okay? So um, I want you to take this piece of paper, and I, what I'd like you to do is to draw a heart. Draw a heart on this piece of paper, okay? But before we do that, I'd like us to open our Bibles to Proverbs. When you've written, um, drawn the heart, I want us to open our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs 4, and you're going to see the importance of what, what I'm telling you this morning to do, okay? Proverbs chapter 4, from verse 20, it says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen? So, okay. So going back to verse 20, it says, My son, attend to my words. My son, attend to my words. Why is this important? Okay. And incline thine ear to my saying. Say my ear. Okay. And then he says, and let them not depart from my eyes. Say my eyes. Point to your eyes. My eyes. Okay. And keep them in the midst of your heart. So, what is happening here? How do things get into our hearts? Through your eye gates, point say eye gate and ear gate. Tell somebody ear gate. Point. Okay. <laughs> okay. So how do things get in? It gets in through your eye gates and through your ear gates. That's how things get into our hearts. Okay. And Jesus Christ said, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. So what I want you to do, just in a few minutes, I want us to do this heart mapping exercise. On your paper, if you've drawn a heart, I want you to um, just write down how your heart is this morning. Is your heart joyful? Write it on your piece of paper. Is your heart joyful? Is it overwhelmed? Is it fatigued? Is your heart whole? Is it peaceful? Is it restful? Is your heart broken? And for those of you watching online, is your, do you feel cut off? Do you feel stressed? Do you feel worried? Whatever it is, I want you to write it on your, just write it on that piece of paper. Okay. Is your heart strong this morning? Is it peaceful? Is it restful? Is it agitated? Is the, do you feel an agitation? Or is it fearful this morning? And what I'd like you to do with that picture, 
I'd like you to speak to the Holy Spirit and ask him, what are the things that you have consumed through your eye gate or through your ear gate that has made your heart troubled? Because the scripture tells us here, it says, verse 20, it says, give attention to my word and incline your ears to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. And when the scripture says, um, let the scriptures, let the word not depart from your eyes, it doesn't mean that, oh, we walk around like this. It doesn't mean that. What the scripture is telling us there is that we don't allow, really what the scripture is talking about, it's talking about vision. And I'm going to be speaking into that this morning, okay? It's about vision, what you see with your eyes, okay? For the scripture tells us that let them not depart from your eyes, for they are life. You see, the word of God is a medicine. The word of God is medicine. And it's, like it's life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So what I want you to do, just in this moment, just a few minutes, a few, just, I'm going to give you a minute or two. I just want you to come in, just speak to the Holy Spirit. And I don't want you to use your intellect, not your brain, your, not, not, not thinking, no. Just in the quietness of your heart. Holy Spirit, what have I consumed this week? Through my eyes? What have I been watching that has made me to be so agitated? Or what have I heard? Was it the news? Or did I hear a sermon that made me, my heart so strong? What have you heard through your, your ear gate or your eye gate? And I just want you to commit that into the Lord in prayer. Just bow down your heads in prayer and just speak to the Lord about that. Is there something that has made you agitated? Take it to him this morning. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Amen. I'd like us when we get home to really continue with that exercise, but I'm going to help you here, okay? Verse 20, verse, if you go back to um, verse 21. So we're talking about the word of God. It says, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So it's important that we keep the word of God in the midst of our hearts, Okay. So the word of God should be what we should allow into our eye gates, through our eye gates and through our ears. It says, keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? Because out of your heart springs forth the issues of life. Did you notice it didn't say, guard your marriage, guard your finances, guard your children. It didn't say that. When you guard the one thing, it will take care of the rest. Can I hear an amen? When you guard your heart, Jesus said, when you guard your heart, it will take control, it will take over the issues of life. So many a times, what we have been listening to causes, you know, to cause fear or anxiety, this is why we need to check that. And then allow, as we take in the word of God, the scripture said the word of God is life. The word of God is the medicine. And it says that in that verse. It says, give attention to my word. Priorities to the word of God. It says, guard your heart. Because your heart, out of your heart, will, control, um, will proceed the issues of life. See, your heart has eyes. Can you see that? It says, your heart has eyes. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1. If you're taking notes, please note takers are history makers. Amen? amen. So if you're taking notes, please write down Ephesians chapter 1, why this is so important. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. It said, this is Paul's prayer. It says, therefore, I also, after I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers, 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18, it says that the eyes of your understanding, another verse said the eyes of your heart, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he has worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and is seated at the right hand in the heavenly places. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Verse, I'll, I'll read it from the Amplified Version. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. It says, By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. Can you see that your eye, your heart has eyes? And this is why it's important to guard what goes in through our ear gate, what I'm listening to, and what, what comes, what, um, my ear gate and my eye gate, what I'm watching. Because it will affect your heart. Amen? This is why it's important. You see, the word of God, you see, when it says guard your heart, it's talking about guard your imagination, guard your vision. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. The people cast off restraint, where there is no vision. And what the scripture is telling us here, you see, the word of God is, is like a picture book. The word of God is like a picture book. So when God is saying about imagination, he's talking about we filling our hearts with the word of God. For example, let's look, open our Bibles to Psalm 1. Fill your heart with imagination. Fill your heart with the word. Begin to imagine yourself in the word. Psalm 1 verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of God. And in his law, he does what? He meditates day and night. In his law, he meditates on the word of God day and night. That is filling your heart with imagination of the word of God. And what, what does it say there? He said, he shall be like a tree. Imagine yourself being like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Imagine yourself planted. And that, that's a picture of, you know, when you're planted as a child of God, you've been planted in the kingdom. You didn't plant yourself. We didn't call ourselves. Amen. We didn't call ourselves. We were planted, we are the planting of the Lord, it says in Isaiah. We are the planting of the, uh, the Lord, the oaks of righteousness. Amen? So we are the planting of the Lord. And you said you shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. When you are filling your mind with the word of God, when, circumstances, when situations come before you, how do we react? When we have the word of God in our hearts, the word of God acts like a shield. The scripture says the shield of faith that is able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. You see, what you give attention to, what you delight in, you will pay attention to it. Is that right? People say, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. But if something matters to you, you will create time for it. Amen. So this is why it's important we give our attention to the word of God because it is life to all your flesh. Proverbs, going back to Proverbs, the word of God is life to all your flesh. So whatever you want, whatever you are lacking, whether it's in your finances, whether it is in raising children, whatever it is, the word of God is the answer. Can I hear an amen? The word of God is the answer to all our flesh. This is why there is always a fight when you want to read the word of God. How many of you? Okay, everyone say, I love. Come on now, say, I love Pastor Linda. How many of you have, you've picked up your Bible? No, first of all, you picked up a magazine, magazine, and you're reading and reading and reading and reading. Nothing happens. All of a sudden, you pick up your Bible. How many of you, raise up your hand, I'm raising up my hand. How many of you are falling asleep? I cast out every spirit of lying from this place. So how many of you have fallen asleep while reading your Bible? Exactly. Thank you. All you who raise your hands, say amen. Say, I am blessed and highly favored. Amen. Can you see, when you are reading normal things, nothing happens. 
But when you pick up to read the Bible, you then fall asleep. Because, you, you know, the enemy doesn't, we have an enemy who doesn't want you to experience the life that God has for you. This is what Jesus Christ paid for. That you will have life to all your flesh. Salvation is not just, oh, a ticket to go to heaven and that's it. No. Salvation involves health. It involves healing. It involves prosperity. It involves um, freedom. That's what Jesus Christ paid for. Can I hear an amen? So when you delight yourself in the word, you are delighting yourself in everything. And you make the word of God. Remember I said it last week. You make the word of God your priority. The word of God is the first place in your heart. Any decision, it goes under the word. Whatever decision that I need to make, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, then I put it down. Because the word of God is my life. Amen? Going back to Psalm 1, it says, He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. This is why you, you imagine the word of God is like, it's a picture book. Amen? And this is why you need to imagine yourself healed. You need to imagine yourself. This is why the imagination of your heart, that's why you fill your heart with the word. Um, giving your children, you know, that's why we have, you know, when you have these little um, children's Bibles, they have lots of pictures in them. The reason why they have them, because just those little words, even if you can't memorize the whole scripture, start with a verse. Start meditating on the word of God. I am a child of God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down where? In green pastures. He leads me beside sea waters. He restores my soul. As you begin to meditate, children and young people begin to meditate on the word of God. How many of you know Psalm 23? Exactly. You know Psalm 23. So you begin to meditate on the word of God. What does it mean to meditate? You chew on it. You know, you, 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 meditation means you are, you are going over, you are muttering it. Even at work. You know, you are muttering. Your mother is my shepherd. I shall not want. It leads me beside still water. Maybe your boss is trying to aggravate you. You say, look, I shall not be afraid. Maybe they, they, they are signing, uh, because... When you know and recognize that the Lord is your shepherd, you will not lack any good thing. That's why it's important we keep the word of God in our heart. It is held to all your flesh. All our flesh. What we listen to, I, you know, Pastor Benny and I, when we get home, the first thing, after we've had a dinner, we listen to the word. Listen to the message. If it's recorded, listen to Manchester. Because we are filling our hearts with the word. And it's not just on Sunday. If you come to her any time of the if I'm in, I'm always listening to the Lord. Why? Because I'm here. Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. It doesn't, faith doesn't come by having heard. Romans chapter 10, right? Faith doesn't come by having heard. Faith comes by you hearing. And that's why you need to keep hearing the word of God. If it is on Spotify, hear faith-filled messages. That tells you of who you are in Christ. Why are many uh, believers, and that's why... One of the things, lifting up your hands in here as a church, Pastor Benny and I, and also all the leaders, is to fill you with the word of God. Because the word of God, a strong church is made up of strong people. That's why you need to be strong in the word. Can I hear an amen? We need to be strong in the word. That's why you need to make the word of God your final authority. You delight, it says his delight is in the law. He delights in the law. And what happened? Let's go back to Psalm 1 again. He delights in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. His delight is in the law of God. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth his fruit in seasons. Amen? Bringing forth his fruit in seasons. That means you imagine yourself, oh yes, thank you Lord, I am fruitful in every season. Every season, I am fruitful. Oh, I, I'm, it doesn't matter. We are in this world, but not of it. There might be a recession out there, but thank you, Lord, I am fruitful. Everything I lay my hands upon is prospering. In the name of Jesus, in my business, because I am there. Joseph, because of Joseph, Potiphar's house was prospering. That's because he understood the spirit of excellence that was on the inside of him. The scripture says that Potiphar, um, uh, Joseph was prosperous. He was a prosperous man. Why? He didn't have any. He was a slave. What was it? It was a spirit of excellence that was on the inside of him. You and I, if you're, a born, if you're born again, you have the spirit of Christ on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can I hear an amen? 
So you see yourself, that is the imagination, what you're doing. You remember, I, remember, I was reading uh, where it says, um, Genesis chapter, where it says, God formed man from the dust of the earth. That word formed, the Greek word, if you look at it in Greek, is also to do with imagination. He formed, being creative, he formed man from the dust of the earth. So if God is a God, he's, a, he's, a, he's the creator. He has given you the same spirit to create words. Now, if I said um, pink elephant, pink elephant, pink elephant. How many of you have seen P-I-N-K-L-E-L? How do I spell elephant? Elephant. Okay. How many of you have seen pink elephant? Pink, pink, pink elephant. How many? Of, but how many of you have, have seen a picture in your mind of a pink elephant? Okay. You are imagining exactly because we think in pictures. That is why your imagination. This is why you're imagining, you, ha you have to watch what, so if I say, don't think of a pink elephant, don't think, don't think of a pink elephant, you have to, don't think of a pink elephant, when I say don't do something, that's exactly the same thing you're doing, you say, what I'm trying to do here, thoughts come in, we all have thoughts going around our minds, right, we all have these thoughts going, but you cannot stop these thoughts, negative thoughts from coming in, what you can do is to replace those thoughts, with good thoughts. Can I hear an amen? amen? So if the negative thought is coming out, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do today. My life is just a mess. No, my life is not a mess. That thought is coming, but you don't need to accept it. Because the enemy will make you to think, oh, those thoughts are your thoughts. No, they're not your thoughts. You can cast down those thoughts. The scripture tells us in, in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, casting down imagination. Casting down imagination again, right? So those imaginations, those negative pictures, if your heart is feeling, you know, if you're feeling sad, you pick up your Bible and get scriptures. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. As you begin to meditate on those words and you begin to believe them and speak on them, you find that that thought disappears. Can I hear an amen? Who, who can bear witness, right? So that's how, that's how we walk in the spirit. By speaking the word of God and believing the word of God and speaking it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the way to overcome a negative imagination is to have a better imagination. So imagine yourself planted by the rivers of water. Lord, you are my shepherd. I will not want. Thank you for making me to lie down. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Let it guard my heart. I will not be afraid. The, yes, the economy is going up and down. But thank you, Lord. You are my shepherd. I am in this world, but not of it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another scripture I'd like us to look at is you, another scripture for our family, Psalm 144. This is something we can speak over our families. I just loved it when I read it. Psalm 144. Psalm 144, from verse. Thank you, Lord. Just one second, I got my notes. Psalm 144, I'm starting from verse 10. I'm going to be. I, I love the um, Young's Literal Translation. I've just got that up on here. Okay. From verse 10. It said, who is, who is giving deliverance to kings? Who is freeing David and his servants from the sword of evil? Verse, um, verse 12. Because our, our sons are as plants becoming great in their youth our daughters have as huge stones polished the likeness of a palace i read that again our sons are as plants becoming great in their youth can i hear an amen our children our sons becoming great in their youth how many of you believe that our sons, our young people becoming great in their youth. You know people say, oh, when you're 50s and 60s, you become great. No, as a young child, 
Young people, you, you declare to yourself, thank you, Lord, that I'll be great in my youth because I have the wisdom of God. I have the spirit of God on the inside of me. Begin to declare that over yourself. Parents, begin to declare that over your sons that, yes, thank you, Lord, that my sons shall be great in their youth. And then he talks about daughters. We're even doing that. I said, our father, thank you for my son. Thank you for my son that he's great in his youth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then our daughters were declaring that we said, as, um, because remember in those days, um, the, um, um, David was writing because of how, you know, in those days, they, they, um, in the palace, you know, like they have all these poles, you know, well decorated. And it was seen that daughters are like poles, well, it's like well decorated. Meaning our daughters have character, poised. Uh, women of virtue hallelujah so our daughters are you know they are honored they are respected they have the spirit of god on the inside of them so we declare that over our children amen so when people outside are saying oh you know they don't know what is no thank you father that the children that you have given unto me they are for signs and wonders amen and he said it keeps on reading it says our garners are full bringing out sorry our flocks are bringing forth thousands Ten thousands in our uh, in and out of our places. Amen. Amen. So they were talking about flocks, but you can see that's prosperity right there. Amen. Amen. That we are bountiful. We are not lacking because the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not lack. Amen. 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 Glory to God. It says our oxen are carrying. Um, are, uh, are carrying. Our oxen are carrying. There is no breach. There is no outgoing. There is no crying in our broad um, and our broad places. Amen. That means there is no complaining. That means that wherever you are in the street, you are, you are is a praise street because you are there. That street would be a street of praise. Amen. Not complaining. You know there are some places you live in. Everybody they are always complaining. People are always complaining. But you can declare the peace of God in your streets. Amen. Hallelujah. This is our God. This is what he has given to us. So this is why it's important that we watch what is going into our eyes and what is going into our ears. Amen. Because we are guarding the imagination of our hearts. Our heart is the seat of our imagination. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So what I'm going to do now in continuing, the next part is obviously lifting up our leader. This is why it's so important that we lift up our leader. So this is for you, lifting you up the way, and also one of the ways that we've tried to um, in, um, incorporate this, this is why we have our connect groups when we come to one another, come together, one another. As we come together in our connect group, we have that on Tuesdays, right? You know, being encouraging one another and being a blessing to one another because of who we are. Amen. So I'm just going to quickly um, look at, um, let's open our Bibles to, be the reason, Philippians chapter 1, verse 19, and I'm reading from the message translation. It says, through your faithful prayers and the generous supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, Everything he wants to do in and through me will be done. Amen. I'll read that again. Through the faithful prayers and generous supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, everything he wants to do in and through me will be done. Now, this is Paul writing to the Philippian church. Okay. Everything that needs to be done. And if I get to apply that in, um, to our, um, our assembly here. Okay. There are things that need to be done. Praise God, as um, Pastor Benny was um, sharing this morning. Praise God for Faith Life Harrogates. God has called us to be the pastors of this, you know, great assembly. Amen. And it's just been an honor. This year is going to be, June is going to be two years that we'll be here. Um, part of Faith Life Manchester, which has been going for about 13 years now. But it's just been awesome to see. And um, one of the things that, you know, started all this is to do with imagination. This is why, you know, we have to, um, uh, um, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 says, without a vision, the people perish. Every one of you, each and every one of us, God has a vision for your life. God has a purpose for you. It might look as if to say nothing is happening, but you need to, that's why we need to imagine that, Father, thank you that you have a purpose for me. Thank you that you created me in your own image. Amen. And have that imagination. Thank him for his words. 
that his word is life to all my flesh. For, so Lord, I thank you that your word that I'm thinking on, your word that I put in front of me, that I'm meditating, your word becomes my vision. And your word I listen to, it's life to me and health to all my flesh. Amen. So there are things that need to be done. And praise God, we've appointed leaders today who are, you know, um, who are going to be able to lift up uh, our hands and support us in what's in, in the ministry. Now, why is this so important? Why is it important to appoint, um, to lift up the hands of leaders? Now, there was um, a survey that was done. And I, I, I was reading a, a friend to um, somebody who wrote a, a book, um, Strength in the Hands, um, Dr. Onwo Chuku, she, was, um, she did this, um, a research. And it was to do with how, in terms of, you know, uh, pastors, you know, who were, you know, um, being burnt out. There was a survey that was done a few years ago. And one of the pastors tweeted that no one leaves the ministry because they are tired of the activities of the job. They leave the ministry because they are wounded by their people. People leaving the ministry not because they don't enjoy the work, but they are wounded because of their people. And we want to declare over this house in the name of Jesus that we will be the reason not, the, you know, we, we will be the reason why I'm able to help and support the leadership of this church. Amen? Glory to God. So we will be the reason, but you need to know that you are valued. Because, because if you weren't here, if there were empty seats, we would have been preaching to empty chairs, right? But the, the church is full this morning. Can I have an amen? We have a full house this, amen, uh, this morning. Amen? So you are valuable, and I want you to see your value. So let's look at... Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. I want you to see your value in the body of Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 19. And I'm going to be reading from the Amplified Classic. I love it from the Amplified. It says, and we, and we also especially thank God continually for this. That when you receive the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it. And not as the words of men or mere men, but as it truly is the word of God, which is effectually at work in you, which be, uh, who believe, exercising its supernatural power in those who adhere to and trust in and rely on it. Amen. Verse 19, I read verse, but verse 19. It says, for what is our hope and our happiness or our, victor, uh, our victor's wrath of ex, uh, exultant triumph when we stand in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? Is it not you? So you, as the flock, as members of this church, you are our hope. You are our joy. In fact, let's look at it from um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. This is why we need to know our value. Philippians 4, verse 1. I'm reading from the Amplified again. It says, Therefore, my brethren, whom I love and yearn to see, my delight and crown, wreath of victory, Thus, stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. Can I hear an amen? So, I want you to tell yourself. Say, I am, I am loved. I am my pastor's delight. I'm not hearing it from, the, I'll be hearing this side. Okay, I'm, okay. Say, I am loved. I am my pastor's delight. I am his crown of wrath. Oh. I am his wreath of glory, and I will stand firm in the Lord. I am my pastor's beloved. Pastor Ben, you see our beloved. And it's true. This is why we need to know your value. Because if you weren't here, none of us would be here. We won't be here. We'll just be preaching. And we all are important to the body of Christ. So don't say, oh, because I'm not doing anything, I'm not important. No, you come in here, you are important. You are our beloved. 
We thank God for you. This is why we lift up our, uh, uh, lifting up your hands, giving you the word, making you to understand that you are of value. Amen. That's how valuable you are. On the last day, when we get to heaven, we're going to be asked, the flock that God made you and the what did you do with them? We are going to give an account, and we're going to read that later. Amen. So you need to know that you are beloved. Everything you do for the kingdom, you are the beloved of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Going back to um, First Thessalonians again, chapter two, verse nineteen. Say, so for what is our hope and happiness, our victor's race of exultant triumph? When we stand in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. Is it not you? Amen. You are our victor's race. Amen. So you are valuable. Tell yourself, I am valuable. I am valuable to this house. Amen. So this is our value. That you are our glory. You are our beloved. Amen. Now, how is... How are we to utilize the grace that God has given to, um, given to us? Okay. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. How can we, ask, if you are valuable, how do you add value? Ephesians chapter 4. From verse 11. And I think Pastor Benny uh, made mention of this when he was praying for our leaders. And his gifts were varied. He himself appointed and gave men to us. He gave men to us. Who are these men that he's given? He's given um, some apostles. In fact, these are what I call the five guys. How many of you have been to five guys? Okay, these are the five guys. Number one. Okay. These are the five guys. They are the apostles. Some prophets. Some evangelists. Some teachers. And some and pastors, pastors, five guys. guys. Amen. Amen. So he has given us them. What did he give? What was his intention? Verse 12. His intention was the perfecting and fully equipping of the saints. His consecrated people. That is you and I. That they should do the work of ministering towards building up Christ's body, the church. Amen. So what has he given? What has he given to us? He has given us the five guys. He has given us pastors. He has given you pastors in this house. Why? What is the purpose of these pastors? Verse um, 12. He says his intention was the perfecting and fully equipping of the saints. Our duty as pastors is to equip you to know who you are in Christ. Can I hear an amen? Equipping of the saints. Ministering towards building the body of Christ. Every one of us, you've been given grace. He's given gifts. And these gifts, as pastors, we are helping you so that you are, as, you, as we minister to you and you receive the word, and we're going to look at that, through that you're able to minister to one another and build the body of Christ. Amen? That's how we lift you up. Amen. For the work of the ministry, towards building up the house of, of Christ. Now, there, there's something, it, it says here, verse 7, let me read verse 7. It says, yet, grace, God's unmerited favor, was given to each of us individually, not indiscriminately, but in different ways in proportion to the measure of Christ, Christ's rich and bountiful, uh, bounteous gifts. So every one of us have a gift. Amen. Amen. Now the gift that God has given, it says, I love the Amplified. It says the gift is given to you individually. So God has given you, the gift is unique to you and unique to the measure of grace that God has given to you. Let, let me illustrate it this way. Um, there was, um, um, was it with Oprah Winfrey? The car, um, well, uh, I think one of her shows, you know, it was, it was very iconic where she was giving away cars. Okay. I'll use this passage to understand what I'm saying. So she was giving away cars because this, there was a, uh, um, uh, an advertising company who wanted to, they wanted to use their budget advertising to do something else. So they said, okay, they will use Oprah Winfrey's show to advertise. 
So what they then did was they um, uh, they got Oprah Winfrey to, you know, obviously her show. They got 11 ladies on the stage. And these 11 ladies, you know, all of them had cars. So while they were... Um, um, looking at, um, you know, how on the stage, you, were, you know, they had the camera on and Oprah was, um, you know, trying out one of the cars and everybody were all excited. They all got cars. Okay. And then she now said, all of you in the congregation, if you look under your chair, because I think the company were giving away 12 cars. So she said, if you look under your chair, you will have the 12th car. You, so, you know, and all of them looked under their, uh, their chairs and all of them had cars. So the whole place, everyone was so, they were so excited that they got the car, you know. So everyone had a car. Amen. Amen. But what, what then happened was, was after, after this, this, what then happened was, people went home and then they realized that, oh my goodness, I have to tax the car. Oh my goodness. Even some people were actually taking out a loan to manage the car. At the end of it all, some, of the, some people had to give the car back. Because the gift was given indiscriminately. It wasn't individually. When God gives you a gift, he gives it to you individually. Because he knows what is placed in you, you can handle it. Hallelujah. So those gifts, some, of the, some people had to return the car. Because they just gave it, they didn't examine what was, they just, even though they did a survey that the people needed the car. But to some of them, they didn't want it. it, it even, for some of them, it even became a burden. Because the gift was given indiscriminately, not individually. So this is what Paul is saying here. The grace given to you is given to us individually, not indiscriminately, but in different ways in proportion to the measure of Christ's bounteous gift. Amen. So say, God, I thank you for my gift. I thank you for my gift. Hallelujah. So that's the gift we've been, we've been given. Now, what is that gift meant to be doing? What are we meant to do with this gift? Let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 24 and 25. Mark 4. These gifts we've been given are for equipping of the saints. Equipping one another. Mark chapter 4. Verse... 24 and 25 it says and he said to them be careful what be careful what you are hearing remember we said we started this morning our ear gates what we are hearing and our eye gates he says be careful what you are hearing the measure of thoughts and study you give to the truth you hear the measure of thoughts that you are giving you are hearing truth this morning how many of you are hearing truth this morning? Okay. So the measure of thought you give to this truth that you are hearing this morning, that you'll be hearing every Sunday, the measure of truth and thought you give to it, to what you hear, will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. So everyone, you have a responsibility. What are you doing? That's why I said take notes. Take notes. Go back and give thought to it. Study it. Give your attention to the word we heard in Proverbs chapter 4. Because it is so important. The measure you get out of it is the measure that will come back to you. And more besides, it will be given to you who hear. We appointed leaders this morning. Thank God they have displayed, you know, they are, they are, they are, they are uh, men and women of integrity. We thank God for that. But faith comes by hearing. You've heard, we're hearing the word of God this morning. As we give attention to it, walking with, that's what the scripture says, walking with the word, engaging with the word. You take the word, you go home, and you study it. Like the scripture says, the Berean Christian, they studied it. They went back and to see whether this word was true. That's how powerful this is. So we have a responsibility to walk with the word. Don't say, oh, I am just young. I don't know what, no, you have a measure. You can walk with the word. Amen? Hallelujah. So what we, so, and this, this is why it's like, a, um, it's like, a, you know, it just goes around because we are giving you the word, you are working with it as in you are applying it to your life. And then because you are applying and you are strong in the word, because remember the word is held to all your flesh. When you hear the word, the word makes you strong. The word builds you up. That's the power of the word of God. 
It's a medicine to all your flesh. So as you are hearing the word of God and you're applying it to your life, it builds you up. Amen. Amen. And when your word is built up, you are strong against the enemy. You are strong against the attacks of the wicked one. Hallelujah. And because you are strong, you are able to encourage the other believers. And when you are doing that, that's what brings joy to your pastors. That's what brings joy to your leader because they see that you are walking in the word. You are engaging the word because you are engaged. We know the scripture says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when somebody is going through something, we then ask, okay, what is coming out of them? We reveal what they've been believing, what they've been saying. Hallelujah. So this is why it's important that we go over the word and we, um, we go over, give, give attention to it. Thought and study, we give to it. The measure you give to it, it will come back to you. Amen. So your time of, no, no, your time of study is not wasted time. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So by how much prayer, study, and yeah, uh, study taken by us, when we do that, by what is, so when you hear what is preached and you applying it, it gives us joy. Amen. Hallelujah. And you're being able, you will be effective to the body of Christ. And let's look at this in, um, let's now look at what impacts what can be your impact on your pastors? So what can be your impact? Let's look at First Thessalonians chapter 3. And a lot of scriptures this morning, but I believe that the word of God, as we apply that, this is, what, this is life to all our flesh. Amen. It says, um, verse 6, But now that Timothy has just come back to us from his uh, visit to you, has brought us the good news of the steadfastness of your faith. Amen? So you can see they were working with the word. And as a result, this, is what, um, um, this was the testimony that came back, that Timothy gave. It says, um, they brought the good news, the steadfastness of your faith, and the warmth of your love, and reported how kindly you cherished, uh, you, uh, you cherish a constant and affectionate remembrance of us. And that you are longing to see us um, as we are to see you. Brethren, verse 7. But, this, but for this reason, in spite of all our stresses and crushes and difficulties, we have been filled with comfort and cheer about you. Why? Because of your faith. The leaning of your whole personality on God in complete trust and confidence. Why was Paul excited? Why was he happy? Because of their faith. We see you grow in the Lord. It brings joy and comfort to us. Why? Because you are applying the word. Why? Because you are engaging with the word that you are, you are hearing. You are studying the word. Amen. Because, we, we now, because now we really live if you stand firm in the Lord. Amen. You really, when you stand firm in the Lord, in fact, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, there was a report that was done. How stressful, you know, um, um, w uh, uh, pastoring, you know, is. You know, um, because, and why is it stressful? Because you are battling against the world. You are taking people from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You think the enemy will be happy? This is why we need to pray for our leaders. The honors that we pray for, not just praying, but recognizing that you are of value to your leaders as well. And that you can add value by you applying the word and working in the word and the word working in us and being a blessing to others as well. Amen. Let's keep on reading. Verse 9. For what adequate thanksgiving can we render to God? Amen. For you, for all the gladness and delight which we enjoy for your sakes before our God. Verse 10. And we continue to pray, effect, um, pray especially and with most intense earnestness night and day we see the, the, that we may see you, you face to face and mend and make good whatever may be imperfect and lacking in your faith this is why we exist as leaders as pastor what, if, what is lacking in your faith this is why we lift you up and faith comes by what faith comes by what faith comes by what and hearing by the word of God. So as you continue to hear, this is why we have, um, you know, um, this message will be recorded. You go over it again. 
This is why the messages are actually online. If you go to uh, w, um, on YouTube, faithlifecenter.com, Pastor Joe's messages, our messages, they are on there for you to go over it again. Give attention to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let's find it. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. I know our time is gone. I do apologize, but yeah, just bear with us a moment. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. It says, Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them. Continually recognizing their authority over you. For they are constantly keeping watch over your souls. We are constantly keeping watch over your souls. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, we are doing that. Praying for you. Hallelujah. Keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual warfare. As men who will have to render an account of their trust. Do, um, do your part. What should be your part? Let them do this with gladness. So you do your part. What is your part? Walking in the word. Praying. Recognizing your value. Walking in who you are. That is your part. So that with gladness and not with sighing and groaning for that which was not profitable to you either. I will read that, read that part again. Do your part to let them do this with gladness. And not with sighing and groaning for that. For that would not be profitable to you either. What is Paul saying here? When we see, when you are growing in the word, you are actually like um, the strongest link. Because we are giving you the word. You are working with the word. You are receiving the word. And as you are receiving the word, you are applying it. And you are being a blessing to the body. Can you see the, the, the cycle is going on? But if you are the one that is not working with the word and, you know, um, not applying the word, thank God this is why we exist to encourage one another. Amen. But the thing is, what, what he's saying here, we don't want to give an account with sighing or groaning. That, oh my God, Lord Jesus. Nobody in this congregation, nobody in this congregation. Lord Jesus, for this person, we don't want to be groaning over anybody. We want you to be strong in the Lord. Because we are building, remember, the vision of this church um, uh, um, from Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22. A little shall become a thousand. This, this is what you are seeing here. This is, uh, uh, this is just a section of what God, where we are going to. Because people out there, they need the truth that you are hearing. Because the truth that you know is what sets people free. And we need to preach the gospel. Jesus said to all nations. So we are believing God, our vision... What we are seeing, our own imagination is we are seeing, I'm, not, well, I'm seeing a full house. I'm seeing all nations. Nations from Pakistan. From, I'm seeing all nations coming in to the gospel. In fact, there's a prophecy. I will end with um, Isaiah chapter 2. Let's read this together. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. It says, in the, in, It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be firmly established as the highest of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Amen. Jesus is coming. Can I hear an amen? Jesus is coming. And he's coming. There's going to come a time. Do you know it's dark out there? There is darkness out there. In the house of God, it's like this. Faith Life Harrogate, Faith Life Center Ministries, Manchester, Preston. In fact, we're, the, the vision of our pastors is actually to build um, faith churches across the northwest of England and Yorkshire. Amen. So that's the vision. And we are seeing that vision. We are seeing people coming to the faith. They are, co they are coming from all over. So this is why we need to be strong. Amen. We need to be strong so that you are able to minister to people. When they, uh, uh, you know, you're able to lay hand on the sick. You know your authority. Somebody comes in and they say, oh, please pray for me. You're not going to say, oh my God. Jesus, what, 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 what did Pastor Linda say? What, what did pa no, 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 no. You know the word. You are growing in the word. Amen. And because you have the word of God in you. This is why it's important we're praying this way. When you're praying and you listen to your spirit, something will be coming up. Something will be called, it's like a picture. Whatever that is, that's the victory. That's what you need to speak into that situation. Hallelujah. And it says, and all nations shall flow to it. In the last day, people are coming because there is no hope out there. There is no, there is, is in fact, Isaiah um, 60 says, gross darkness shall cover the earth. 
But in the house of God, there's, there's, there's light. In you, there is light. You have the light of God. You have the light of the word of God. And this is why it's important that we lift up. That's why you need to pray for your leaders. That as we, the word of, I believe the word of God is prevailing this morning. I believe God is setting people free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is why we're important. We lift up our leaders and pray for our leaders. Also, your, um, how we lift up our leaders by knowing our value, knowing that you're valuable, but also through your sowing and your serving. Amen. Amen. Through your sowing, sowing and, your and your serving. serving. Sowing, sowing your time. time. I'll call it the three T's. What are my three T's? Where are my Bible studies? My three T's. What are my three T's? Time, treasure, and talent. Amen. Your time, your treasure, and your talent. Sowing them. That's how you lift our hands up. By your serving. I mean, there's plenty of, I mean, the, uh, the leaders that have been appointed, they are looking for, uh, um, uh, I mean, we have a, a, a list, yeah? So if you are not yet serving, this is an opportunity for you to serve. Lord, I want to serve. See, um, who is the head of, uh, um, yeah, amen. <laughs> and and uh, Dr. Dattel, see the, the head of stewards. I want to serve. I want to be part of this. By, that, by so that you are lifting up our hands, Amen. Hallelujah, because we are building a well-resourced church, poised and ready, poised and ready to, to reach thousands, to reach hundreds. Amen. Hallelujah. So you and I, you are a blessing. You are a blessing to the body. Amen. Let's rise up on our feet. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to speak to the Lord this morning. What, 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 what is coming up in your spirit? What is the Lord? What has he spoken to you about this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take the word. The word of God is, is life. That Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, that your word I've heard this morning is life to my flesh. Whatever situation, if you are feeling anxious or worried, speak the word of God over it. Speak the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee bows. If you are feeling worried, say, no, he said, be anxious for nothing. Let not your heart be troubled. You have a responsibility to guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your ear gates. Fill it with the word of God. Meditate upon the word of God. Hallelujah. And you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Bringing forth fruits in seasons. Your leaves will not wither. Your leaves will not wither. Ever young, ever green. Hallelujah. And whatsoever you do prospers. Because you are meditating upon the word of God. The word of God is your final authority. The word of God is your focus. Let not your heart be troubled. Let it not be afraid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God is nigh you in your heart and in your mouth. If you are here this morning and it's like you don't know, you have never invited Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. This is an opportunity. All this will not make sense because it's by the Spirit. If you are here and it's like this, you are feeling guilt, you feel condemned, this is the time to surrender to Jesus. It says, if you confess me, if you confess Jesus, it says the word of God is nigh you in your heart and in your mouth. And if this is you, there's like a two-ton weight on your shoulders. And you want to say, uh, Pastor Linda, this morning, I want to surrender my heart to Jesus. I want to give him my, I want to give him my heart. I want to give him my, the pain, the burden, the burden of sin. The, the scripture says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God this morning is eternal life. So if you are here and you want to give your heart to Jesus, I want to raise up your hands. If it's the first time you want to give your heart to Jesus, and I want you to say this after me. If you're here and you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If that's you, I would just want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. And for paying the penalty for my sins. Lord Jesus. I ask you 
to come into my heart and to become my Lord and Savior and fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit and that from this day I will live for you thank you for dying on the cross for me I am saved he said if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I believe with my heart that you rose from the grave I will be saved so I thank you Lord that I am saved and there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus thank you precious father in Jesus name I pray and if you are that person I want you to see us at the end of the service we have a special gift for you so father I just want to say thank you so much thank you father just tell you say thank you Lord thank you father there is therefore no condemnation because I am in Christ Jesus thank you for your word that we've heard today our uh, Lord, we just believe you that God is going to bear fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone in the house said a big? Amen.